Hello viewers, today I'm going to talk about an ancient rice wine recipe. Maybe it's the oldest rice wine recipe ever written down and it's uh, it's uh, 1800 years old and uh, I was uh, surprised to find out about it and I want to share what I learned in this uh, in today's episode. And this all has to do, uh, this all started with a April Fool's uh, video that I made on April, published on April 1st. And uh, how did that lead to this? Well, uh, you'll have to watch and learn. So if you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified when I publish a new video on the subject of rustic Asian rice wine every week. And please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I really appreciate your help in, in spreading the word about rustic Asian rice wine, letting people know about this channel. And I, I really appreciate your support. So wh where did this all start? So, so there's a lot of ground to cover today. Uh, I hope it's not too confusing. Uh, and I am trying out a new microphone today. Let me know if it sounds better than normal or uh, or if you if you like it if you don't like it let me know in the comments so uh let's uh let me let's let me start uh where this came from uh my april fools episode i tried to make a joke about some overly complicated rice wine recipe that had 12 stages that was my joke now uh thing is after i published that video I thought, oh, maybe I should search for some recipes with a lot of stages. What's the most stages in a recipe? Because in in Korean rice wine, you know, in my limited reading, it seemed like, oh, five, five stages was the maximum. It, it wasn't useful to do more than five stages. So I thought five was the maximum. And if, if that's why it was a joke to do 12. But uh, when I started searching, I found... Uh, I found some references to uh, a nine-stage spring wine, uh, Chinese rice wine recipe that was uh, apparently very old. So I uh, wanted to learn more about that. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you uh, the first things I found. So this is the Baidu uh, by uh, Baidu Encyclopedia, and uh, sort of like Wikipedia that people can edit it. Except it's, uh, I mean, it's just, it's all owned by this company, Baidu. So, so here it is, nine, uh, nine brewing spring wine. Of course, I had to look these things up and I would just, can I figure this out? Of course, with Google Translate, maybe I can figure this out. Um, now, uh, this is just lets you get some general idea of the topic of the page. When you get into the details, Scroll down here. Oh, is this, uh, what is this? Okay, so Cao Cao is the author of this. But uh, look at the, yeah, it's my favorite sentence here. Uh, using Google Translate, you get, you get things like this. Divine comedy, stupid comedy. At that time, there were two kinds of music used in brewing, divine music and stupid music. So um, just blindly using Google Translate, I'm not going to really understand this recipe. So I'm going to have to get further into this. And maybe I should find the original text, uh, what this is referring to. And um, let me get back to the uh, to the Chinese version. There is some quoted text here that... Uh, um, that I searched for and I, and I could find uh, in in some um, older reference materials, the uh, like this encyclopedia, um, in this encyclopedia. Okay, so I found I found that that text here. Here it is. This is a uh, nine brewing spring wine. Okay, and I found it in another volume. This is four, slightly different characters, uh, some different text at the 
beginning and end, but, uh, but it's the same text. And then the original for, for all of this seems to be from the Qimin Yao Shu, which is this uh, agricultural text from the 6th century. And here's a higher resolution scan of a copy of it. And uh, yeah, here's a, so here's the text uh, that I want to talk about. And even though I, um, I don't know that much Chinese, I'm uh, in terms of reading, I'm at a, I think a, a second grade in like I'm in the second grade level, grade two level of uh, of Chinese. So uh, you know, so so a Chinese kid who's uh, completed second grade knows more characters than I do, can read more characters than I do. Um, but uh, but I'll, I'll try to figure out what I can, and e even with my limited ability, I can tell this is a recipe. I can see there's there's water, there's rice, there's chu, the the leavening agent, the f fermentation starter, and there's amounts and units of of measurement in here. So this this is a recipe, and so I really want to understand it. And, and why does this recipe have nine stages? So let's let's. Uh, Let's see what we can figure out. Um, so there's a bunch of things I want to talk about. There's the, wh the what's the chronology of this text and who and who wrote it, uh, and uh, so what what can I w figure out about the details of this recipe? How much information is in this recipe? Because I know from uh, that often the oh, even a recipe from a few hundred years ago, a lot of information is left out, and there's, it's hard to figure out what. Uh, you know, it's hard to reproduce an old recipe, but is there enough information in here to uh, to reproduce it? And or and so, what what can I learn from this recipe? So let's talk about the chronology of this first. What I think what we're looking at is, of course, not the original text from the sixth century, but there is there is a whole sequence of uh, of uh, where this came from. So this is attributed to uh, you can see at the beginning here. Wei Wu Di, Wei Wu Di is uh, is the is the is Emperor Wu of Wei of the Wei Kingdom. Well, that um, that's the name he got after his death. Uh, while he was alive, his name was uh, Cao Cao, and he was a he was the most powerful warlord in northern China, and he he ruled the he effectively ruled that that kingdom, which was I think the biggest kingdom. Uh, in northern China at the time, even though he didn't, he wasn't able to unify China. Anyhow, this is what, uh, here's some uh, representations of him, artistic representations of him. So this first one is, uh, is uh, this, this is uh, Cao Cao presenting this wine to the emperor. And if I expand this, this is the, um, this is the nine brewing spring wine right here. So this 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 is some modern uh, uh, artistic rendition of this event. This isn't a this is not some ancient painting. This is something made relatively recently. But it explains the the accepted story of this. What it says is in the year 196 A.D. So this is Cao Cao presenting wine. Uh, so he's presenting wine to the emperor. And this says uh, 1,800 years ago at the end, and it's signed. Looks like this is the signature of of who wrote this or who the artist. So um, okay, so that's that actually tells me more about the chronology. So this, so here here's the chronology as I understand it. So Cao so, uh, presented this this wine and this recipe to the emperor in the year 196 AD. And he he must have uh, written this down. And this uh, this written record of what happened in, in the year 196 uh, was um, incorporated into the Qimin Yao Shu, which, uh, which is a sixth century agricultural text. Um, so Cao Cao got this got this wine from his hometown. It was uh, 
excellent enough to present to the emperor. 400 years later, it was incorporated into an agricultural text. And over the subsequent centuries, it was incorporated, the text of the Qimin Yao Shu was incorporated into various encyclopedias and it was copied and uh, reproduced that way. So that's why we have this record of this recipe that's 1800 years old. It's not a direct uh, transmission from or the original, you know, bit of recipe that, that Cao Cao wrote down, but, uh, but it is, um, but it, but it was, uh, copied and preserved many, many times over the centuries. So this text, there's, there are multiple versions of this text, different editions, things to compare. So it's quite, um, I think it's quite robust. This, it wasn't just some made up recipe that I'm pretty sure this, uh, this happened. Now, this is just the artistic rendition of it. Let's see some other, um, other, uh, this was his hometown, um, Guozhou, and, uh, currently, and the, that's, uh, here's an, here's a, here's a statue of Cao Cao in Guozhou. So, that's, uh, yeah. That's, that's the fellow. Okay, so that's, that's the chronology and, and, uh, who wrote this. There's a lot to learn about this guy. Uh, probably I'm not the right person to explain all this. So what, what can I learn about, about this recipe by reading the text? This is, this is the entire text of the recipe. And, uh, like I said, my, my reading ability for Chinese is like, I'm in, I'm in the second grade. So, uh, but, but a lot of these characters I can recognize and I, I see rice and water and, and, uh, uh, amounts, um, and, and chew. So there's, there's, there is information there. So what are, there's, there are some things that are going to make it hard though. This is, this is so old from, the, from, from the second century, um, that, uh, this is classical Chinese and the characters, um, things are really concise where modern Chinese would use two characters for a word. There would just be one character here and characters could have archaic meanings uh, and the grammar is different. So those things I'm not going to be able to figure out. So I'm going to need, I'm going to need help. And there is a, there is something that will help me a lot. Um, so I, so I asked for help and, uh, uh, a scholar of classical Chinese, of literary, literary Chinese, um, pointed me in the right direction. There's, uh, um, there is, there's no translation of this into English, a complete translation of the Qimi Yao Shu into English, but there is, a, an annotated, commented version in Chinese. And then what's that look like? That looks like, um, uh, it looks like this. Yeah. So this, this is Qimi Yao Shu, but the, the, the commented version, the annotated version. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go to that text. This is that text. Oh, here's another problem with classical Chinese. I, I didn't mention one of the big problems. Uh, there's no punctuation in classical Chinese. Just, just one character after another, no punctuation at all. So, um, first thing uh, that you have to do that the, that's the first thing that we see here in the annotated version is that, uh, uh punctuation is put in. So this is this author's preferred punctuation. And, uh, I should see there's uh there's two parts here to this text. The first part is the actual recipe, and then there's a comment that was added, I, I guess, in the sixth century. So there's the first part, which is the recipe, and then there's a one or two sentence comment at the at the end of the recipe. Um what else uh, I wanna say, um 
And what you see here in green here, what these parts in green, those are the column numbers, the line numbers. So, so it's column 24, column 25. Um, those are the column numbers of the original text. And then if we um, scroll down, Here's the comments and the explanation for each line, for line, for uh, for column 24, 25, 26, 27. So this is super useful. Um, so so th this uh, this commented version, which I think was published in 1982, is what I'm going to use to to understand. Um, to understand the uh, the recipe, so let's uh, let's go back to the recipe, the text, original text here. Wei Wu Di is the author, and this is the uh, the, the uh, nine brewing spring wine, and this was uh, this reported, I guess, reported to the uh, to the emperor. Um, so uh, there's a there's a lot of very intriguing words that I'd I'd like to understand, but uh, I'm not sure that I do. So I'm going to stick with what I'm certain about. So here is a uh, using chu, uh, thirty gene, thirty gene, uh, and uh, water is uh, five dan, and so the gene and the that are units of weight, and uh, um, even though, um, and what's important for for me is knowing the ratio. And uh, there are 120 gene in a, in a dat. So why do I know that? I know that from uh, from Chinese Wikipedia. Here's uh, here it is, and uh, let's look at the weights here. Yeah, this is weights, and the, the, we want to look at uh, Han Dynasty. So during the Han Dynasty, one one dan is 120 jin. So using uh, and 30 30 jin is a quarter of a uh, dan. Okay, so that's the proportion that uh, that we want to. Uh, so that's good. That means we, I'm going to understand the proportion between the chu and the the water and uh, what else. And I also need to know the rice. So let's read on. Then there's some um, specification of the date. This is like the twelfth month, the second day, and uh, this is where the commentary helps. It says this uh, this character is actually miswritten in this copy. It's actually sh uh, this looks like uh, like uh, pure chew but uh it's actually soaked chew so the chew should be the chew instead of ching chew for me what matters is that there's okay there's some kind of of chew in this recipe and uh there's something about freezing and thawing this does start in the winter and there's something about straining or filtering um but the uh, important thing, see just a little further on here, there's every three days, there's one brew and uh, you fill it up uh, with nine dan of rice. So that's the that's the total ingredients. There's 30 gene of chu, there's five dan of water, and there's nine dan of, of rice. So that's a, that's great. The, and these are these measurements are by weight, which is excellent. So there's so I could reproduce this you know very precisely with those proportions. And it's pretty clear that it really does say every yeah. So do this nine times. You 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 uh, every three days there's one one uh, brewing 
every three days. He ended up filling it up with nine dan of rice. Um, and uh, further on, it says oh, if nine is enough, if it still tastes, if there's still a bitter taste, you do it for 10. So this really is a lot of, of stages. So um, this is not an ordinary recipe. This is a recipe suitable for the emperor. So it's, it is sort of uh, extraordinary and extreme that it would have 10 stages. That's the only thing that would be good enough for the, for this guy to uh, to give to the emperor. Of course, even though Cao Cao was the guy really in charge anyhow, he could have done whatever he wanted, but uh, this is what he did. Okay, and... Uh, the last part is some kind of question. There's a there's a duosha here, and the units ch have changed. They're talking about still a certain amount of uh, of uh, chu thirty jin, but the uh, units for the um, but the units for the rice have changed to who. Which is a volume measurement, like a like a bushel or a basket, rather than than uh, the the uh, rather than the uh, weight measurements in the rest of the recipe. So it is pretty clear that this is part of the end is a commentary on the earlier part of the recipe. Now there are uh, there are other very interesting words characters here that talk about. You know, seem to talk about straining and filtering and washing. Um, but uh, but I'm not going to say more about it because, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact meaning. And there's one very intriguing part in the middle here, which, uh, yeah, this, um, something about it, some, for example, many insects. Just reading that literally, that's what that says. Well, the, um, and this, this, these are insects. Or worms or something. Um, um, looking at the commentary, uh, turns out no one knows what that means. The expert who did this uh, commentary um, here, this is the commentary, yeah, this part. These are the insects. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, all it says here is maybe there's some. Uh, it's some. Uh, it's out. Of, maybe it's out of order. You know, there could be some some something missing, something out of order. This is not understood. No, impossible to understand. So, uh, so this is. Uh, so, uh, you know, some things we're just we're just not going to be able to understand after all these uh, centuries. Uh, what the uh, what Cao Cao was was writing here, we just don't know. That meaning has been lost. Okay, but back to the text. Uh, we do know we do know this is a this is a nine or ten stage recipe um, and brews for at, at least a month. Uh, and if I could understand it a bit more, I know if it, it's probably quite a bit more than it could be. Two, it could be two months. I, I I don't know how long you're supposed to wait after the last um, after the last stage, but this uh, is a recipe and is rather clear about the proportions. And uh, um, reading uh, reading the commentary about it in uh, modern Chinese and on on the another website that for even on the Baidu. So re reading the commentary here about the um, but with the proportion of chew to rice, it's about three percent, and that makes sense. That would make sense with uh, uh, um, modern uh, Chinese uh, yeast cakes for brewing. That would be a similar proportion for the for the small kind, the, the small discs or balls. That would be a similar proportion by weight. So that that makes sense, and the total amount with the uh, with the nine dan of rice and five dan of water, um, how much of a, how much that is in total in liters? That would fill a you know a very large jar, but I, that kind of jar would exist. Um, 
that would be a large brewing container, um, you know, the, on the order of magnitude of four or 500 liters, that's definitely possible. So, so that's, um, so that's possible. Um, that makes sense. So we have a recipe that, that makes sense after all these centuries, so, but some of the details are, are just, uh, not understandable after all this time. Yeah. If I, if I ever learn more about this recipe, I will share it with, uh, with my viewers. I, I think, uh, I might even try to reproduce part of this. Um, I might not do the nine or 10 stages, but it'd be interesting to, uh, to try a multiple stage recipe in this, in this fashion. So d despite my limited knowledge and the problems of Google Translate, um, with the help of, of real scholars of, uh, of classical and literary Chinese, I was pointed in the right direction and uh, could, uh, could uh, learn something about this ancient recipe. Oh, there's one more thing. So one more thing I want to show you. Another place where you find references to this recipe are in basically advertising materials for current uh, alcohol, commercial alcohol production in this town today. They, they want to use this this ancient history to, to promote their current product. So this current alcohol product is Gujing Gongzhou, this uh, uh, tribute alcohol, the ancient spring tribute alcohol. Ancient, yeah. So that's what's currently produced in Guozhou and they like referring to the, this ancient recipe as a continuation of that. So that's interesting, but one of the most interesting things is that uh, they got this, uh, they were very successful in pr doing their promotions. They got this Guinness Book of World Records, Guinness World Records, and this is a little ironic coming from Guinness, the, the brewery, uh, this, uh, unfortunately seems to be inaccurate is uh the uh, the current product is a distilled product but the ancient recipe is not a it's just a fermented rice wine it's not distilled and so i think this certificate from guinness is just uh incorrect it's unfortunate this certificate has inaccurate information on it uh but it, it really is an ancient recipe. It might be the oldest rice wine recipe ever written down. I'm not sure about that, but uh, in any case, I don't know of any earlier one. And if you know of any other ancient recipes, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to investigate them further. So uh, hope you found this interesting. This was a long video. Thank you for watching.